you saw or listened to my previous episode on why you should learn Linux, then you should know that Linux is a valuable skill to have and it's also valuable to a lot of enterprises. So in today's episode, I'm bringing my top five Linux certifications for beginners. So don't forget to click like, subscribe, and that notification bell. Welcome to Debt Free and IT. I'm your host, Mike. This podcast is for anyone who's looking to get into the IT industry, whether it's for a career change or you're just interested. I think you come to the right place. The first Linux certification I have that's good for a beginner is none other than the CompTIA's Linux Plus. So pretty much we all know CompTIA from the A pluses to Security Plus, Network Plus. So it's a known name. So a lot of companies, they know that CompTIA name. So they also have a Linux Plus. So this Linux Plus, it gives you that foundational Linux knowledge and it pretty much goes over system management, security, scripting, automation, and some troubleshooting. Uh, the price of this exam is roughly around $350 or so, around about $358 to be exact. Uh, prepares you for certain roles such as your admin roles, which is your network admin, server admin, a lot of those roles that are system admin, which those roles pretty much eventually lead into server engineer, system engineer, network engineers. But so this prepares you for that beginner level role. So, and also they recommend that you have 12 months of hands-on experience uh, using Linux in a Linux environment, but that's not a, a prereq. So if you don't have that, you can still take this test. So that's why it comes on the list of a lot of lists of being a beginner cert for the Linux Plus. Pretty much just like a couple of other certs, this certification does expire every three years. So every three years, you're either going to renew it. Well, with CompTIA, you pretty much have to renew it. Um, there's no higher cert that CompTIA has for the Linux Plus. So every three years, you have to go in and renew your certification. And pretty much the test for this is a multiple choice uh, format. So CompTIA's Linux Plus is a pretty good cert for a beginner. So the next certification that I have that's good for a beginner with Linux, this comes from the Linux Professional Institute and it's the LPIC1. So pretty much this test consists of two exams, exam 101 and exam 102. And it covers the exam 101, it covers the system architecture, uh, Linux installations, Unix commands, uh, some device and file systems. And then the test, the 102 test pretty much goes into more of the scripting some of your admin tasks you may have in those admin roles, especially on the server side, some networking fundamentals, and also some security. Pretty much this exam is 200 a piece for exam 101 and exam 102, but it's valid for five years. So you have a little bit longer than your Linux Plus. And also this test comes in a multiple choice format. So this is also a good test for anyone who's trying to get knowledge in Linux, even from a beginner standpoint to where this certification could go ahead and lead on to one of their more advanced certifications like the LPIC2 or the LPIC3. So all this comes from the Linux Professional Institute. So this is something you might want to add on your radar or something you might want to put in your goals. This next certification comes from Red Hat. So Red Hat, they're known in the industry, uh, been known for years. Uh, a lot of jobs require some sort of Red Hat knowledge or Red Hat certification. So this certification is the Red Hat Certified System Admin, also known as the RHCSA. So pretty much this teaches you the core system admin skills required for the Red Hat Enterprise Linux environment. So this focuses mainly on a lot of Red Hat products, but still a lot of these skills that you learn, even though you're learning on a proprietary system, a lot of times those are gonna transfer over. So just knowing being, having that certification means that you're pretty well proficient with Linux. You know, even if it's a different flavor, something other than Red Hat, it won't take you long to get adapt. Real similar to those that may have Cisco certifications for Cisco switches. Yeah, you was mainly trained on that proprietary product, that proprietary name, that Cisco, equipment or Cisco products. But if you get on a Dell switch or a Juniper, 
it don't take you long to get caught up to speed because as long as you know the terminology and the foundational skills, you're going to be able to navigate your way around no matter who's the vendor. So that's a similar way you can look at Red Hat. Even though you're being trained on this one particular environment, you know, those do transfer over, but also Red Hat usually comes with a good, a pretty good salary for a, a Red Hat system admin. So it's, it's uh, a lot of companies know it, a lot of companies value this, uh, their Red Hat certifications. Pretty much this certification is a little bit different though, where most of the other ones you do multiple choice. This certification is pretty much a, a practical hands-on exam that require you to undertake real world tasks. So pretty much this is one of those exams where you don't have the luxury of saying, okay, let me do, I don't know the answer to this question. So let me do the process of elimination. You don't have that luxury. You need to know how to do the actual task that, that is referring for you to do in this test. So that's something that also tends to probably be why a lot of companies value this certification because they know that if you got this certification, you actually know your stuff. It ain't like if you got another certification where I have to come in and ask you a couple of questions just to kind of weed through to see if you actually know this stuff because a lot of other certs, let's face it, they're multiple choice. So this one, it, it kind of stands apart from the crowd being that it's hands-on and practical. So this certification covers managing users and groups, deploy configuration and maintaining systems, and also using tools for handling some command line environments. So also, this certification doesn't have no prereq. So it's recommended that you do have some work experience in Red Hat as a sysadmin, or you have taken two of the Red Hat uh, related courses, the RH-124 and the RH-134. But pretty much if you haven't taken those courses, and let's say um, you're still trying to get this certification, you don't necessarily have to have had those courses. So... That's why I still list it as a beginner certification also, because it's one of the first certifications for their Red Hat, the system admin cert. The next cert up is the system engineer. So it's still a beginner cert in, in my book by beginner. I'm not saying that it's easy. You know, I'm not saying that just because it's be I label it as a beginner cert, that this cert is going to be easy. It's probably just from looking at it at a glance, it's probably for me will be harder than the CCNA. But one, this one of the, those certifications that when you actually get it, you'll be proud that you got it as, as with any certification. But with this one being that it's uh, more practical, it's probably going to mean much more to you. The price of this certification is roughly around $400. It expires every three years, just like many other certs. I know your CCNA expires every three years where you either have to renew the cert or move on to a higher cert. So that's, that's nothing new. Uh, pretty much this certification is going to prepare you for jobs like a Linux system admin, uh, a lot of Linux engineers, network admin, system admin. So some of the similar roles, just like some of the other certs. But I think this certification will probably be more, more highly regarded too. If you're finding value in this episode and you're listening via YouTube or your favorite podcasting app, please leave me a review or a comment. If you have a friend who needs to hear this, please share this episode with them. So this next cert also comes from the Linux Professional Institute, and it's called the Linux Essentials. So pretty much this is a good cert before moving on to any advanced cert or harder cert. So if you had to put them in an order from uh, beginner to more advanced, it'll probably be uh, just talking about the Linux uh, Professional Institute certifications. It'll probably be this Linux Essentials, then the LPIC 1, 2, and 3. Uh, this certification here, it doesn't expire, so it lasts for a lifetime. It's one exam, no prereqs. Uh, pretty much the cost is roughly around $120, and it gives you uh, prepared for many admin jobs, uh, developing jobs, uh, some engineer jobs. But just speaking, just being honest, you're probably going to need a more advanced certification. So these, this one here, like I said, it's, it's a beginner certification also, just like the LPIC one. But the LPIC one may be the one that you see that's asked about on most job, um, for most job roles. A lot of them may require the L, LPIC one or maybe the one of the Red Hat certifications. But Linux Essentials, it is also a good certification for a beginner to get that foundation and then possibly moving on 
to a more advanced certification. And like I said, it's one exam, roughly around $120. And pretty much the good thing about this Linux Essential certification is that it doesn't expire. So once you get it, you always will be Linux Essential certified. So, you know, that's uh, a plus in my book. You know, you don't have to go and renew it like you do every other cert every two to three years. So Linux Essentials may be something that you want to add to your resume or something that you can add to your goal list to get in the future. So this next certification comes from the Linux Foundation, and this pretty much is the Linux Foundation Certified System Admin, also called the LFCS. So pretty much this cert here validates your ability to install, configure, and also operate Linux-based operating systems, whether on premises or in cloud-based. So keyword cloud-based. So as stated in one of my earlier videos, Linux is heavily involved with the crowd with the cloud. You know, that cloud, uh, a lot of AWS, a lot of those who use Linux PCs, Linux virtual PCs. So getting that understanding of Linux, it will transfer over to the cloud where maybe you may go ahead and get a cloud certification for maybe an AWS or a Microsoft with Azure. But knowing Linux could be that first stepping stone for you. And with this certification, there's no prerequisites. The cost on it is roughly around $395 and pretty much is one exam that's online and product and it has multiple choice and also it has some command line that you have to be able to do in Linux in order to pass this test. And it's valid for, you guessed it, three years, just like many other certs where after three years you need to either renew the cert or probably move on to another cert within that institution. So my thoughts on these certifications, so pretty much any certification, any Linux certification, I think will be add value to your career and help you um, be more marketable in the, in, the, in, the, in the industry, in the IT industry. So any Linux certification is a plus, you know, it's, it's not no one that's, I think that is, uh, you know, it's like, oh, that's, I wouldn't even try to attempt it. So any one of them that proves that, you have that foundational knowledge. All of that would be a plus. But if you want to get the most bang for your buck, in my eyes, you may see this different. So do your own research first. Not saying uh, just listen to what I say. Do your own research. But in my eyes, that Red Hat certification will probably give you the most bang for your buck. So it's one of the few certs that you're actually doing practical hands-on to pass the certification. So it proves that if you pass that certification, you you pretty much, you know your way around a Red Hat system. And also not just Red Hat because it's still, Red Hat still built on that Linux foundation. So those skills are transferred over to probably anything with, with Linux or built on top of that Linux OS. So I think the Red Hat give you the most bang for your buck. Like I said, checking your area. One thing I like to do is I'll go to Indeed or I'll go to LinkedIn and I'll put in that certification in the job search just to see what kind of jobs is around in my area. Then also you, with this certification, you may be able to find some remote roles because a lot of server admins and system admin roles, a lot of those now have became uh, remote where most of the time you're not dealing with physical servers. You may have virtual machines that uh, you're, you're, you're using. So just have to do your own research. But in my eyes, I think this Red Hat certification will probably give you the most bang for your buck. So I want y'all to take that journey with me. I have uh, one of these certifications. I haven't decided on which one. Most likely it might be Red Hat that I want to put on my list to uh, start studying for and hopefully obtain in the future. So stay tuned to that. So that brings me to the end of this episode. Hopefully you found some value in this episode. If you're on TikTok, Facebook, IG, you can follow me at Debt Free and IT. If you have any questions or comments, you can email me at debtfreeandit at gmail.com. Other than that, I'll see you next week. Peace.